Hi, this is Bob Kay with Biker Pros. We're here in Milwaukee for the Harley Davidson Museum 2012 Custom Bike Show Weekend. We have two shows going on this weekend. We have a two day professional AMD World Championship qualifier, and we also have the traditional Harley Davidson Museum Ride In Show on Sunday. I'm privileged to have with me today Keith Ball, aka Bandit, from BikerNet. Uh, Keith, you and I go back a couple years and we've seen a lot of changes in the um, custom bike scene. I think we were talking about that before. Uh, what's your take on the AMD qualifier show today? Well, it's a, it's a great show uh, to kick this thing off. Um, we'll get to see the styles that emerge from the Milwaukee area and uh, kind of assess it for the future. You know, the custom bike scene really came about um, after World War II when the guys started coming back from overseas and they didn't want to ride the traditional baggers that they had back then um, and kind of created the bobber scene by just taking everything off their bike they possibly could and running around crazy. Um, and then we kind of got into the chopper scene and I know that's when you and I kind of started riding, Keith. Um, and We've seen baggers get really big the past couple of years, and uh, what do you think about some of these fancy big wheel baggers we got out here? Well, bagger seems to be the the emerges the emerging motorcycle platform for the future. Uh, I guess Sturgis this year was just bagger city, and sort of like you were saying in the '40s, guys guys had uh, baggers, they had dressers, and they modified it. They can't leave them alone. So they buy even a new bagger that's very high tech and has all the accessories in the world and then strip it down. <laughs> and then build it back up again. <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny. The, uh, we talked about bobbers kind of kicking off the custom bike building and we got into the end of the 60s and 70s. Choppers were real big. You talk to a lot of people now, they say choppers are dead, but you know, baggers were big then, baggers are big now. Um, back in the turn of the century after the 100th year anniversary, uh, the custom bike building world got a, was in a pretty tough situation with the economy and everybody thought custom bike building was going away. Well, what emerged was bobbers where you could do more with less. Um, and people were doing some really fine examples of uh, really stripped down, clean looking motorcycles. We got some great bikes here today. Um, what do you think about the bobbers we got out there? Oh, I think some of these bikes are amazing. I mean, absolutely amazing. I mean, they've gone from the bobber to sort of the flat tracker to sort of a performance bobber. And one thing that I've noticed that uh, Greg is here, and he's the producer of the Smokeouts. Well, I went to the Smokeouts when they first started, and it was really built on guys who built bikes in their garage. They just tore bikes down. There was no paint. There was no chrome. Then I went the next year and there was a little bit of refinement to these bikes. The following year, a little paint. And so, you know, you see that the whole thing's gonna be cyclical. It'll come around, they'll be back. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. But, you know, speaking of the garage builders, even at the AMD, we recognize that we have to cultivate new and young talent and we have uh, created the Retro Mod class. This is for any bike, uh, modified bike, over 25 years old. We have a couple great examples today. And over the past couple years, we've seen some great um, guys where they've come out where they don't have to have thousands of dollars into their bikes. One of my favorites was in San Mateo. There was a KX100 that was done up cafe style. It just was so clean and simple and just beautiful. And if he had a thousand dollars into it, I would have been impressed, but it was just a gorgeous bike. And we've seen cafe bikes and bobbers and Honda 350s, a lot of old iron heads in this class. And it's really great what uh, can be done with a lot of elbow grease and time and effort where you don't have to spend a lot of that money. So um, what, what do you hear from the garage builders on BikerNet? Well, mostly the guys are, they're, you know, they're creative souls like we were, you know, that they're, they're trying different things. They're trying to be inexpensive about it, like you mentioned. They, they don't want to spend a lot of money on Chrome, but, they, but they're trying different things and then they're moving on and then they move on to the next bike. Because most of these guys, once they build it, it's like an artist painting a painting. When they're done, they want to paint another one. 
That's absolutely right. And, and, and you know what I really like is the functionality of the garage builder's bikes. I got lucky to do the uh, long ride out to the smoke out one year, speaking on the smoke out, and um, rode alongside with a guy on an XX650. Um, he had done everything himself. He had used parts around the house, not necessarily motorcycle parts. I think he had $600 total into the bike. And he was out riding with us on the long ride and just having a great time. And um, it, it's really, this is what motorcycling is all about. This is what makes it different from cages and running around on four wheels is that personal affection um, and that motivation that makes you want to take the extra effort to make that bike yours. And really, that's the real basics of customization. So I tend to believe customization is here for a long time from the basic garage builders to the professional builders with the new baggers all stretched out and modified with incredible body work to the high performance engines. So we'd like you to you know, enjoy the bikes here today. Um, look at all these different creations that the builders have done and uh, come back again next year. And don't forget our ride-in show on Sunday. And Keith, really appreciate you coming by and um, sharing some of your experiences with us. Well, thanks very much, Bob. It's great to be here. I just got back from Bonneville. I flew from Salt Lake City over here. And so it's it's interesting to see the bikes here and see what's going on in Bonneville. And I, it's, it's amazing. Thank you very much, Keith. Motorcycling is alive and well. Um, Bob Kay signing off from the Milwaukee Museum Show. Thank you.